Hello, welcome to another edition of Farmer's Diary. I'm your host, Iwe Sekunde. If it's your first time here with us, let's inform you that our aim on the program is to highlight the importance of farming. Especially here in Nigeria where we have vast fertile land and adequate water for all year round farming. Although, owing to several years of neglect of the development of the agriculture sector, farming no longer stood as the priority choice of especially the young ones. But the story is gradually changing as all attention is now on agriculture, looking at farming as a business. Nigerians have continued to react to President Muhammadu Buhari's presentation of the 2018 budget proposal to the legislators. On Farmer's Diary today, we will share with you the views of the lead director of the Center for Social Justice, Eze Onyekwiri, one of the foremost advocates for increased budgetary allocation for agriculture, as he comments on the budget proposal for agriculture. Let's listen to him. Well, first of all, I must say it's a happy development that the budget was released a little bit earlier than in previous two years, which is when it was released in late December. And so the legislature now has an opportunity to now look at the budget and see what it can do to it, if possibly to see if it can finish the passage before the end of the year, or if it's not done before the end of the year, to do it very early in the new year, maybe in late January. Well, if you look at the what we have so far, we don't have the recurrent side of the Greek vote. What we have is about uh, the capital side, which is about $118 billion, which represents less than 5%, about 4.9% of the capital vote. So if that trend continues, uh, maybe there's not, there are not so many people at like the Ministry of Agric and Rural Development to take up the large chunk in terms of recurrent expenditure. So we are likely to have maybe about 5% to not more than 6% dedicated to agriculture, and which is far, far less than the 10% Makuto declaration, which uh, African governments uh, consented to be bound by. And that's not a very good development considering the number of our population, the percentage of our population that is involved in agric, and also considering what uh, the contribution of agriculture to the GDP, which is more than 20% of the GDP. So whatever gives us so much percentage of the GDP should also, we should also be in a position to put enough resources. But I must state that uh, the resources available for agriculture are beyond what we have in the budget. There are so many interventions from CBN and from some other agencies. So I think uh, the money in the budget could be increased, but at the same time, we continue to intensify other non-budgetary sources of making sure agriculture is properly funded. I think that the agri sector suffers from the challenge every other sector suffers about lack of transparency and accountability and the larger question of value for money because a lot of funds have been budgeted across Nigerian sectors and we are not seeing the real value. We have also incurred a lot of loans from multilateral agencies, the, IM, the World Bank, African Development Bank for Agriculture, but we are not seeing the impact. Particularly when we look at the idea of the full value chain, across the value chain development of agriculture. But you must understand the concentric circle, the interlinkage and the interrelationship of all sectors of development. You cannot have a full value chain approach to agriculture when people do not have access to energy, to electricity, to preserve their products, or when transportation is not available to move the commodities from villages to towns where they are needed at a cheaper rate. And so all those bottlenecks that you have in transportation, in electricity, in lack of uh, knowledge, even the knowledge and manpower to begin to harness some of these resources and convert them to intermediate products are, are going to affect agricultural productivity and as well as the value that farmers and ordinary Nigerians derive from agriculture because it's not just enough to plant crops. You must plant them with a hope or say you are going to sell them, make a good life livelihood out of them. And then there's also the missing link between transforming agricultural products into, as I mentioned, industrial raw materials, finished products, which is what happens in every civilized and developed economy, so that farmers can begin to reap more 
you know, the benefits because when, once these are raw materials for these factories, the prices will go up and then there will be more reward for people who go to the farms. Like I did say, you, we must also begin to ask what is the link between agriculture and power? Uh, underdeveloped power sector needs to be factored into agricultural production and that's why the whole idea of renewable energy, alternative energy, we don't need to wait for the grid to be put in far-flung remote areas. That's where solar power and other sources of renewable energy have to come in to fill the gap and make sure that we improve agricultural livelihoods. They should speed up the, uh, the passage of the budget and beyond that, I think they should focus a lot on climate smart agriculture in the sense that a good part of the north where you have agricultural production going on we have a lot of desertification we have a lot of drought we have a lot of challenges which are linked to the changing climate and so what do we do we must intensify a, an agricultural production system that takes care of building resilience you know reducing our vulnerabilities to climate change fixing more water on the in the ground planting more trees and then providing that space for crops to also be planted and then we must also going forward address the very critical husband farmer challenges because we need crops to grow so that they don't become fodder for the herds. But at the same time, we also need the meat. We need the milk. We need everything that can be produced in it, from the, from the cattle, from the goods, the sheep. And so that's why we need to become more civilized in building ranches. Because in other parts of the world, where they produce good quantity of meat, milk, in Argentina, in Brazil, in America, you don't have cattle running roughshod over farms or being grazed on the street. So we must find a way of, first of all, reducing this tension, and that will also allow us to increase productivity both in our crops and also in the cattle, the meat, and the dairy. So that's also another area that I think the National Assembly should critically look at what can they use the budget to do to support production to grow on both sides and reduce the conflict which are taking a lot of lives and property. Well, AZ Onyekwere there, appealing for the speedy consideration and passage of the budget to enable farmers benefit from it as soon as the rains drop. We will bring you updates on the 2018 agricultural budget allocation as events unfold. On our part here, we will always bring to you those best farming practices that can fetch you some extra cash, which means there are farming activities you can engage in even while you work. Charles Kufre will be taking us through what it takes to engage in a modern backyard farming. You know, um, there is a trend right now, urban farming. And of course, you see big cities of the world, you see that they have gardens. It could be on top of the building, it could be down, it could be anywhere, but they have gardens now in big buildings around the cities of the world. And so what this means is that, you know, um, struggling for land that is not readily available, and so, so you can make use of um, the space you have to grow vegetable, because I mean, that's something that daily the demand is going up, and we have to meet up this demand, because you must eat food. And so you can grow various vegetables. As you see in the garden here, we also have a lot of vegetables. But I do my mint leaf here. I, I do my scent leaf here. Those are highly medicinal leaf. I do my coriander. I do my celery. Okay, um, I do it right here. Um, my pumpkin, I do it here. Of course, you can see our crop. But basically, my, what I'm growing here are purely organic because I have some animals here. And so it's zero waste. I use the waste from my animal to grow my vegetables. And, and that's what I eat. It's also set it up for people mm -hmm. so that they don't waste your space. You know, because now if you don't grow tree, we're supposed to be growing trees, but you can see the city is almost empty. You don't have good trees. So you need to have vegetable at your backyard so that the, 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 the environment will be balanced. It's maintenance. And of course, these crops, this plant does not smell. And the kind of animals I keep to don't smell, okay? And that explains why I've not gone into like catfish and all those stuff that need, that, uh, you know, smells a lot. So I actually go into, areas that doesn't smell because it has to do with uh, the living area. So I select uh, the, the product I go into. Of course, it's possible. We run training here. We, we organize training for scenery. 
um, training for grass cutter farming, and then you see rabbit tree there. We run training, empower people to go out there and start something. Even vegetable gardening, we do we do training too. Like um, you see the celery, see the coriander there. Okay, we train people. Even the cabbage you see there, we do that too. The yogo here, we do that. We, we train you how to maintain them, how to take good care of them, and some other the any type vegetable you can. The cucumber you can see, we go it at the backyard. So any other vegetable that you need to know more about because people go into it and they fail. So you need to know a lot about each of these products you want to go into. Pick interest in it and go in. Now you can see mint leaf is, is really, at times, is very scarce in the market. Okay, um, because a lot of people have suddenly discovered that mint is very good to, to cleanse the system and give you flat tummy, <laughs> and so it's getting very scarce. Uh, we need a lot of people because this thing comes from only one area, mostly jaws, and so it's getting very scarce. So why can't you raise your mint leaf at your backyard, at your backyard, and then you pluck it? And because we need to stay healthy. You know, the problem is that we, we hustle, we do a lot of work, but we don't think about what we eat. We eat, we go there, buy fast food, you know, just eat anything, you don't care about it. Mm -hmm. But it's good because you, you need to stay alive to be able to take care of the younger ones. Mm -hmm. So if you don't consider your nutrition, if you don't consider what you eat, the, the tendency is that you're going to break down mm -hmm. and you eat junk and it's going to affect your system. Mm -hmm. So it's good you monitor what you eat mm -hmm. so that you can stay alive and hustle. Without that, you break down. A lot of people are crashing. Do you know with 5,000 naira you can just start your snail farming? All you need is get the knowledge first. With 10,000, you can start, depending on the capacity. You don't need to start big. Then you start with 1,000 snail. You don't need to cook. Just start with 10 snails. Gradually, you grow. Mm -hmm. But do something. The, the, the trend is changing. So the Nigeria is changing. The way we are now is that everyone has to do something. You just have to do something with your hand. A family of grass cutter will cost you maybe, maybe, maybe with, say, 100,000. One male, four female. A family of grass, that makes a family, grass cutter. In different material. Rabbit too, uh, you need a male and female to also start. An average of maybe 66,000 naira, so that is 12,000 naira, male and female. You know, look at a rabbit, for example. You know, we all eating chicken, chicken every time. Rabbit is white meat, and the cholesterol level in rabbit is lower. So why can't we embrace rabbit? And by the way, we're doing also local uh, chicken because organic, pure organic chicken. We don't want, we don't use this uh, poultry feed kind of a thing. We're also doing that too, local chicken, so that you come, you can see very few people, um, you know, are producing that and we are buying it from the villages. We need to develop the market. The most important thing, we need to begin. Do you see the rubbish they are importing into the country in the name of chicken? So, I mean, you don't even know what you're eating. Even the imported fish. Recently, I saw a documentary on a fish like a nylon, and that's what people are eating. And so we have to begin to do these things ourselves. You know, we, we have to know what we are eating because you are what you eat. Nigeria has massive market. Of course, it is an export market for snail. If it's properly packaged, there's an export market for snail. Massive export market for snail. They're actually looking how we can be able to get enough snail that we can certify it, and then we'll be able to package it for an export. Let us learn how to work with our hand. Success, success is about 98 work and 2% miracle. Mm -hmm. But we have turned that around in Nigeria 98 miracle and 2% work. That's why the society is where it is. We have to work and then, of course, you know, success is when opportunity means preparation. So we have to, the youth have to be ready to work and take Nigeria to the next level. Agriculture, that's the next level. That's, that is the trend, that is where we are going to. Worldwide, because I mean, food people must eat food. If you don't eat, you can't survive. Even you are in the forest, they are fighting, you need to come, you need to look for food. Without food, you can't fight. So food is everything, so we need to produce this food. Did I hear him say we can farm grass cutters at our backyards? Well, 
Let's share with you the experience during our visit to one of the grass cutter farms. We talk about the cash. Okay, so we talk about the cage, okay? We talk about different type of cages, okay? Um, this particular cage here, okay, let's start here. This particular cage here is for a family, okay? You can see this is about um, two meters. It's for a family, okay? This takes care of the the four male females and the one male. So we keep them inside here. Okay? So it's for a family. You can see how big it is. Hmm? Yeah. So when you are doing, depending on how many families you are bringing in. Like this one, when they came in, they all stayed in different families, you know. Mm. Okay, this. What you see here is, this particular cage now is um, for the male, the mating room. Okay. okay, it's a mating room. We talked about it. We saw it there. You can see this is, we have the male there. We just brought a female for him. So you can see we brought the female here. And after he has done his work, and um, we are going to remove. So this, you can see the compartment. See the dimension in the, you're going to see it in the video. The dimension is well stated right there. So this is for a mating room, okay? Now, this dimension here, you see, is actually, we have for maternity, where they can stay, where they can also give birth, okay? They can give birth inside here. Yes. Yeah, we have the holding one, single individual thing, to hold them one, one. You can see the dimension. You can see the dimension of here? Yeah. You see it here. It's right here to hold them one, one. You know, um, that is that, and then, um, yeah, so we still have a lot of this maternity. Um, now you look at this, this one just give the, the bed. You can come and see the babies, if you can, if the camera can capture it. You see the babies? Okay. Do you see how they look? How are you? you see how they look? Hmm? Protecting the, the children. You see how they look? Give birth to how many at once? Five. What? Mm. You can give birth to five at once. Okay. Because wow. it is five now. It's already, by the time I select it and meet with the other ones, I have my family. Mm. I have my hundred thousand mm. So it's five. Yeah. Uh -huh. Is it not so? That's the family. So beautiful. And see what we're trying to describe grass cutter. I think uh, you see how it is. You see the nose, you see the eyes, fitting all the description what we talk about, okay? Now you talk about the drinker and the feeder. You see how the drinker and the feeder looks? Hmm? Using cement to build it. Okay, this is what we use for their feet, um, their water, okay? You see it, okay? So leave the leg. Okay. Now you can see the male. You can see the difference. Okay. You can see where this is located. You can see the gap between here and the anus. Okay. This is gentle. This is the penis here. You can see the difference between here. You can even see it's coming out. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is how you know that it is a male, okay? But in the female one, you can see that this is very close by, between this and the two the almost to get. This is a pellet for grass cutter, okay? This is the concentrate is made out of different um, materials, okay? Here we have the wheat of fowls. Here we have maize inside. Here we have our vitamins inside in form of a premix. We have a premix here. Um, can you open that back? I think we, we can show you. Here we have a bone meal inside here. We have a bone meal here too. They are all come, they all come in various uh, percentages. Okay, when we are formulating. Okay. okay. You go into different quantities that needs to be added to make up the whole feed. So apart from this, so this is the pellet feed. 
okay uh, and so we're now going to show you how we're going to combine those ingredients together to make this feed okay combine it together and now use our pelleting machine to produce this so you will see how this is done um, this is an wheat of fowls this is how it looks this is how wheat of fowls look you can see uh -huh. after you have collected your wheat this is the off house. It's just like the one. The waste. Of the waste. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is it. Um, that is it. So, now you know that you can farm on your well-decorated backyard without any offensive smell. But as you heard there, it is better to seek experts training and guide through setting up your farm. The Utah is fast approaching. Nigerian farmers say they are making frantic efforts to ensure the prices of rice will drop so that everyone can afford to eat Nigerian rice to support Nigerian farmers. As against enriching foreign countries through rice importation. Get ready for your information. That bag you buy at the cost of 13, 14, 15,000, you buy it not more than six, 7,000 in the, in the nearest future. With our growing population, can Nigerian farmers produce enough to go around? Niger State can stop importation of rice into the country. Niger State can feed the whole of Africa because we have the 10% of land population in Nigeria. Well, let's halt the discussion here for today. But if you join us on our next edition, we'll take a trip round to find out if Nigerian farmers are capable to produce enough rice to fulfill their promise. And I hear the Nigerian rice is even more nutritious. Remember to reach us on our various social media platforms. For advert placements, call 080-3454-0469. See you again same time next week. I'm your host, Iwe Sekunde.